Hello, my name is Chad Art, and I'm an Extension Economist with Iowa State University. And today we'll be talking about options as a, this is part of a series of videos supporting the Iowa Commodity Challenge. And when you look at options, uh, a lot of people look at this as a very exotic marketing tool, but options are something that, when, if you want to think of it, something that we use all, quite often. Often when you look at, for example, an insurance policy, it's basically a type of option. So what an option is, an option is a right, but not the obligation, in this case, to buy or sell a futures contract. When we talk about options in terms of crop marketing, we're always talking about them in combination with a futures contract here. And there are basically two styles of options that we'll talk about. One gives you the right to buy a futures contract, the other gives you the right to sell a futures contract. Now farmers, in the, when they're looking at it from a crop marketing perspective, can either buy or sell options. You can be on either side of this marketplace. When you buy an option, you get the right to do whatever the option offers. If you sell the option, that's where you face the obligation because as the seller of an option, you're the one that is obliged to help the buyer do whatever they're needing to do. So there's a definite difference here between buying an option and selling an option when we look at what the requirements requirements are. Now options are tied to specific futures contracts and they're tied to it in that you know not only when you buy an option are you buying it at a price level and we call that price level the strike price that's the price at which the option may be you know is triggered where you can buy or sell that futures contract at that strike price but you're also buying an option for a period of time for example, oftentimes we talk about when we're looking at crop marketing, you're wanting to hold on to the crop in the springtime. So you may be looking at a futures option on the May or March contracts for corn. So we're often talking about a specific point in time along with a specific price when we talk about options. Now, as I mentioned, there are two types of options. Their names are puts and calls. The idea is that what you're doing with these options are they do different things. What a put option is, is it gives you the right to sell futures contracts. And with a put, what you're able to do is you're able to create a price floor. When you buy this put option, again, it gives you the right to sell a futures contract. So when we think about going back and thinking about commodity hedging usually futures, when we hedge a with futures, we end up selling a futures contract. So what a put does is it gives you the right to sell a futures contract. That's the way it creates that price floor. And so more than likely, if we're talking about it from a crop marketing perspective from a producer, we're looking at put options as part of that scenario. The other is a call option. And a call option gives you the right to buy futures. So it's a little different, you know, it's different than the, the hedging perspective on commodity futures. We often use a call option when we're looking to replace cash bushels. And in this case, we're looking for a way to protect against prices going higher after we've sold our cash commodity. And that's when we would want to utilize a call option here. We'll have a, we have two videos, one looking at the use of put options, the other looking at the use of call options if you look through these series of videos. What I'm going to do right now is walk you through very brief examples to show you what options do and how they protect prices in different ways. So let's go back and say that we've, we're, going to, we're going to buy a $4 put option on March corn futures. What that option does is it gives us the right to sell March corn futures at $4 per bushel if we choose to exercise this options contract. Now, if I had bought a $4 call option instead, that would give me the right to buy March corn futures at $4. So again, here's the big difference between a put and a call. A put gives you the right to sell futures. A call gives you the right to buy those futures. And that's gonna mean that they work in different ways as prices change. With that $4 put option that I started out with here, what you're looking at is a payoff graph that looks like this. The idea is that your put options, again, protect against lower prices. They provide, if you will, a price floor. In the case of my $4 put option, as prices go above $4, the put, I'm not going to exercise it because the price levels are higher than I expected. The futures price is better than that $4, and so I would rather take advantage of the current futures price than the $4 price. But if futures prices, when we get to March, are below $4, 
Then this put option gives me the right to sell at $4, which means, you know, let's say prices had fallen to $3 per bushel on that March corn contract. Well, I can buy them at $3, I can sell them due to the right that I'm given with the put option at $4, and I can capture a dollar's worth of value from my put option. And so what that's doing is it's paying me when prices are falling. And so when I think of that in combination with my cash position that I may have on my corn, the idea is that if cash prices are falling along with the futures price, I'm losing money on my cash position, but I'm gaining the money back given my use of the put option here. And it creates a floor because it's basically a penny for penny trade off there. And so a put is a great way to put in a price floor as I'm looking to protect bushels that I'm possibly storing and, and holding until better prices occur. Now a call option, if you will, sort of does the opposite. It protects me if prices go higher. In the case of again a call, a call gives me the right to buy futures at a certain price. In this case again I'm going to look at $4 price. And so if prices stay below $4, I would choose not to exercise my call option and there's basically no return from the option. But if prices go higher, in this case let's say they go up to $5 per bushel on that corn futures, then what I can do with my call option here is I have the right to buy futures at $4 a bushel. I can turn around and sell them in the marketplace for $5. I can capture a dollar's worth of value there. So we would use a call option from a producer perspective if I've already sold my corn and I'm worried about prices going higher after I've sold my corn. Here's a way I can capture those price increases after I've made my cash sale. So there are different ways to utilize options within my marketing strategy. Now one of the things that often confuses people when they're looking at the option is they look at the option premium because I have to pay an upfront charge to use options where I don't have to do that really with commodity futures. When I do a hedge, the only thing I have to worry about there is the margin call. And in fact, if prices always move for me, then I never face that either. So one of the things I wanted to do is go back and look at a scenario where you do see the difference between what's it cost you for the upfront on the option versus the margin call you might face for a commodity future. And this is a case going back to 2008 where we saw some fairly dramatic move prices and movement in price. And so what you're seeing here is the red line is basically the margin calls that we would see over time utilizing the futures contract. The blue line that you see there, that's basically I paid my upfront premium for a put option here to protect prices as well. And the black line here is what happened back in 2008 in terms of commodity futures moving along here. So as you can see here, starting in March, we were around $6 for corn. By the time we ended up there in, in July, we were staring at a price of nearly $8 for corn. So we saw a fairly dramatic price movement here. When I bought that put option, I was able to purchase that price protection. And you can see here on the right-hand axis, it was costing me in total about $4,000 for the entire contract. So I was paying about $0.80 cents a bushel for this price protection because prices were fairly volatile. But as you can see, the red line is the margin calls. And as you can see, as we move through March and April and May, those margin calls began to accumulate. So by the time I got out to July, I was staring at over $10,000 on a per-contract basis to maintain the margin to keep that hedge, whereas if I had bought a put option, I only had to have $4,000 invested to provide that same sort of price floor protection here. So there is can be some advantage uh, to utilizing options at times, especially with volatile prices. Now the option premium that you pay for these put and call options can really be divided into two distinct sections or parts. There's the intrinsic value of the option, which is basically how much is the option worth today if I traded on it today. If I took that put option and immediately used it to sell commodity futures, or if I took that call option and immediately bought those commodity futures. But there's also the time value of the option, because in this case I'm buying an option on something that can extend into the future. You know, I could be buying something in December on an option that has life until May. And so there's the value of time here as well. How much time is left in this option? The intrinsic value depends upon where 
futures prices are at today versus the strike price of the option. And we can basically look at the difference and we can determine the intrinsic value of an option at any point in time, given what we know. The time value is a little different because the time value is negotiated, if you will. It depends upon the length of time we have left within the options contract. It depends upon the price volatility that we're seeing in the marketplace. And that time value can jump depending upon how volatile the markets are at a given point in time. So let me walk you through an example of what I mean by that. So let's say we're looking at some options. In this case, I'm gonna look at a put option for soybeans for a March contract. And let's say that, you know, right now, they're around $10 per bushel when I look at that strike price. So if I look at that futures price being around the same as my strike price here, at around $10, let's say that that was going to cost me originally 60 cents per bushel for that option premium. Given that the futures price and the strike price are the same, the intrinsic value is zero. There's no benefit to me of trading on this option right now. So this 60 cents of premium that I'm facing is all based upon the time value uh, from now until March. Could this option pay off? And that's where that 60 cents comes from. Now let's say the next day, futures price moves up 20 cents to $10.20 a bushel. The option premium in this case actually goes down a little bit, it goes down to 56 cents. What's happened here? Well, two things have happened here. When we look at the prices moved up, futures price up to $10.20. The put option gives me the right to sell a contract at $10. So if we think about that, I can either sell today at $10.20 or I have the right to sell at $10. Well, which is more valuable? It's the right to sell today at $10.20. So my option is worth a little bit less due to that. Also, we've seen a day's worth of movement here. We're a day closer to the contract expiration. So the time value tends to decline over time. So we've seen that time value drop four cents here to 56 cents a bushel. Next day, we'll move prices again. In this case, let's say they reverse, and we get prices going down to $9.70 a bushel. In this case, you see the option premium rise dramatically, because in this case, this drop in price is exactly what the options contract is meant to protect me against. The idea is a put option protects me against lower prices. And in fact, in this case, the price drop has been dramatic enough that the intrinsic value is now positive. I have the right to sell March soybean futures at $10 a bushel. The price right now is at $9.70. So I could gain 30 cents today by exercising the option. So the intrinsic value is 30 cents. But I also still have time value left. From now until March, prices could fall even lower. And so you can see that time value, while it's declining, is still a big portion of my uh, premium that I'm looking at here. So it's dropped down to 53 cents. So these pieces do work together when you're looking at that option premium. Next day, prices fall another 15 cents. We see that additional 15 cents of increase in the intrinsic value. Again, time value declining a little bit, but we've seen some very volatile prices. So as I move forward into day five, let's say prices go back up a little bit to 990. An option premium comes down given that prices have moved up for this put option. Intrinsic value here, 10 cents, the difference between that $10 strike price and where the futures price is at today at 990. But here you can see the time value jumps now. The reason it jumps here is that when you look over the series you know, of prices over this week, seeing some very volatile markets and that time value increases to say, okay, the market's more volatile, therefore the time value has increased, if you will, and therefore you can see options premium move back up due to the volatility in the market. So that's, in a nutshell, how, if you will, option premiums get set, and they depend upon those two pieces. Now, overall, when we're looking at options trading, there are some definite advantages to options. Like I say, they can be used to establish price floors or price ceilings. Typically, producers are going to be looking for, in terms of a price floor. Users of commodities, such as your ethanol plants, your elevators, may be looking to put in price ceilings. Another advantage is you're not just locked into a particular buyer. An options contract is something you do with the exchange so you're not locking into that elevator or that ethanol plant to make that sale. You're still open as far as who you make that final connection to. They are very flexible 
contracts. So just like futures, they're very easy to get into and out of. And one of the biggest uh, features that a lot of producers like are there are no margin requirements here like you would face with a futures hedge. There are though some specific disadvantages as well. One is the specific size of the contract. In order to trade options, you're trading in 5,000 bushel increments to line up with the futures contracts on the Chicago Board of Trade. And you also still have to pay commissions. You do have to face that option premium and I want you to think of that option premium kind of like a crop insurance premium because the idea is that what options realistically are, they're a type of price insurance, if you will. And just like you pay a premium for insurance, you pay a premium for the option. And so this is a brief description of options. Again, my name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist for Iowa State University. And this is in uh, connection with the Iowa Commodity Challenge. And I want to wish you happy marketing throughout this marketing season.